Hello, this is Marcelo Chermak in RealFlow 2015. Let's talk about procedure animation. Let's create expressions using the trigonometry functions in the curve editor. Let's start by creating a null. So we go in the objects uh, geometry uh, tab and we hit null. And then we also we right click on the position and we create curve. So in the curve editor, three positions X, Y, and Z comes up, and we, we're interested right now in the X position. So we start by typing T time, and then we close this, and let's take a look at this guy, but it's because it's so small. Let's make this 10, 10, and 10. All right, let's pull back a little bit now. We can see a little better. And let's play. All right, as you can see, the null is moving. And by frame 120, which is five seconds, time, meaning it is moving at one unit, one meter per second. So this is, you know, five seconds if you can see in a frame 24 this hits one meter per second so you have an idea of how fast this is going but i wanted this to go faster so let's go into the x again and let's multiply this by 10. as you can see the curve update immediately a much faster curve and then we close this and we pull back a little bit and then we hit play see now it's going much faster and uh, good so now we go back and into the curve editor and the x and let's create a condition now we want to say that uh, if right frame parentheses frame it's larger than 10. Time, it you know it'll be time multiplied by 10. Then we can say otherwise it will be at zero. And let's enter that curve. So see how the curve modify now which is actually this should be if frame is smaller than 10. All right, so let's see what happened now. All right, so when it gets to frame 10, it goes back to zero. But uh, between zero and nine, as you can see here, between zero and nine, the null is moving at a speed of time multiplied by 10. But when it gets to 10, it goes back to zero, right? That's, that's good. So when we come back, we will improve on this curve and see what else we can do. So now we are back. And at frame 9, you check the position here of this null and is at 3.75. So let's open that at the curve again. And on this position, instead of going back to zero, let this be 3.75. All right. So as you can see here, the curve immediately goes from zero to 3.75 and then stays there at 3.75. 7.5. Again, you go there and you go 3.75 and stops at that place. So how is that helpful for us? Let's go back and imagine that there is a simulation here that we're going to do. Let's create a cube here all right let's make this cube 
Let's uh, see what this cube looks like. And then we create another cube. And we we'll move this forward over here. And let's make this bigger and thinner. And uh, let's make this wider here. So in this first example, let's create standard particles and let's create a fill object. And the object that we're going to fill is the first cube, cube one. All right. So fill the volume, go back. It's a lot of particles. So let's make this smaller um, cube. Let's go cube one. Let's make it smaller. Let's set that. So now we have on the fuel object just 26,000 particles, which is good. So we create a demon here that is gravity. And what we're going to do now is uh, parent this cube to that null, that first null. So, and then let's get that fill object. Just makes this a little, you know, viscous. Let's make it this 10, but we're gonna make it this 30. And the surface tensioner is make it 15. So let's save this and let's see what happened. And at frame nine, the no stops. Yeah, and something happened. It's breaking through, but we shouldn't, you know. So what are we gonna do now in this cube? We're gonna say, all right, right click on this, add a curve. And for that simulation, we're gonna say, if pretty much the same expression, if frame, is smaller than nine or 10, we have that a one, which is active. Otherwise we have that a zero, which is inactive. So anything below 10, it will be, the object will be active and if it's, above 10 it will be inactive so let's see yep if you look up here on the right up corner you got uh right top corner you're gonna see active inactive all right so let's reset this and let's do the simulation again and a frame 10 we have the liquid being tossed. Let's take that a grid off so we can see this better. The liquid being tossed at that wall. Yeah, what we're gonna do now is to make this a little more interesting by getting this second object to be have more uh, stickiness, not stickiness, actually friction. Let's make this friction up to nine. Um, yep, zero, zero, nine. And then let's make this roughness to five. Even though it looks like it's zero, but it's five, right? And let's make it as uh, 200 maybe. But what I want to do besides that, let's add another piece of geometry here just so we can visualize this thing better, right? And on that, no, we will go in on, your, on the friction and right click it and add the curve. And we will, well, I want to insert the same uh, friction and the same uh, thickness and roughness that I had on the cube two. So let's go into uh, 
D variables and let's go to find the what do we want it's gonna be the cube 2 and I want a roughness all right so and then I'm gonna uh, sorry uh, let me undo that on the particle friction I want to go into cube 2 and uh, have the particle friction let's find it uh, particle friction is the same we're going to be the same one as particle friction and let's right click on the stick and let's go into uh, cube 2 stick sticky and let's go into roughness also added curve and the roughness of the sphere 2 is going to have the same uh, cube 2 and we're going to do roughness there we go so those three curves now are controlled by cube 2 so let's reset this save and simulate again And as it simulate, you know that by frame 10, the cube, the initial, the uh, emitter cube, it will toss, it will turn itself off. And release the liquid, which will create a splash. against the objects that you have. Let's get this object and make it um, and this sphere. Let's make it also shaded so we can see this better. So, so am I happy with the result? Yeah, maybe. Let's go back here, stop the simulation and just do a quick yeah it's not bad so but I, what i don't like is the fact that uh these uh null is only moving in x so let's go into the node let's open this position curve again go into curve editor and in y i wanted this curve to go also t all right so let's see Control save and let's simulate this guy again. And as you can see now, the null is moving up. And not it's hitting the object a little faster, but not fast enough. It's hitting a little higher, but not enough. So let's open that curve again on this null. And let's say that I wanted that Y movement multiply by five. All right, so it's a steeper curve. And let's save this and let's simulate it again. There we go. It's moving faster and it's moving upwards five times more so it will multiply by you know five meters uh per second so now we get all that liquid in a splash going up with the same velocity that um or a similar velocity that uh or adding to its velocity the uh particle on that but as you can that are done null but as you can see it, it keeps simulating and because I just put time there it just keep moving up which in our case doesn't really matter that uh, we got what we want and we got a good splash coming to that wall so let's uh, see what it looks like this if we play uh if we play back this 
and let's go to frame 50 and try to do that. Let's see what it looks like. Let's uh, reset. Oh, sorry, not reset. Let's go to frame 50 uh, and 50 here on the timeline. And all we want to do, we want to open GL preview and play blast this to see what it looks like. Yeah. So good. That's exactly what we want. Excellent. So when we come back, we will keep exploring the uh, what we learned in this lesson and what else we can do with uh, this trigonometry functions and the expressions.